The Greatest Temptation, Tale as Old as Time. I know you may be tempted to think about Bell and the Beast when I say that phrase, but the truth is that there's a tale that goes back through the annals of time much farther than that. A tale that each and every person who will ever listen to this right now, right here, they'll relate to it with perfect clarity. And no, I'm not talking about the tale of love, L-O-V-E, love. Well, maybe I am. Yeah, unfortunately, I definitely am talking about love, but not the kind of love that Belle and the Beast fell into over a bowl of soup and a snowball fight. The kind of love I'm talking about is one that many people never even recognize. They're madly in love right now as I'm speaking, and they don't have a clue that it's an unhealthy love affair that was never meant to be. A forbidden love affair, one which you dream about every day of your life, one where lust becomes accepted and you can't wait to get your hands wrapped around the thing that you desire so much. Some of you, your minds are wandering way too much right now. Get your minds out of the gutter. What's wrong with y'all? Come on. This is a Christian Christian podcast here. I'm not talking about some Harlequin love affair with eight different synonyms for body parts that I can't even really talk about in a public forum like this. No, I'm talking about your love affair with food. You know you have one. Trust me, I understand this lustful desire all too well. Greasy pizza from that hole in the wall, a plate of cheese conies from Skyline Chili, a massive king-sized slab of Montgomery and ribs, and if you don't live near Cincinnati, y'all don't know nothing about this. A huge Cinnabon with extra icing oozing off the sides, and for me, a a, a massive ice-cold Mountain Dew on a hot summer day. Trust me, this guy could go on and on about the places that this love affair has taken me over the years. I have some stories to tell, and maybe I'll get to some of those on today's podcast. But the point is that we can all relate to what I'm talking about. Food has gotten each of us into a bad place more times than me, we may want to admit. And why do I relate this uh, as the tale as old as time? Well, because that's exactly what it is. I've called it the greatest temptation here today for a distinct reason. Because the temptation that food brings into our life has been part of the history of man literally from the very beginning. What did the enemy use to tempt Adam and Eve? Food. It was the very first thing he used to pull them away from a close, intimate relationship with God. He wanted them to not listen to and heed the voice of the Lord. So he got them over into satisfying their flesh through their stomach and their taste buds. It may seem trivial uh, to you right now. It may seem like a very trivial thing, actually, but I don't think it's any coincidence whatsoever. There's something that happens in our life when we choose food over God's voice. In Philippians 3.19, Paul points out to us that our belly can become the God in our life. He says about those people that their glory is in their shame, that they set their mind on earthly things and their end is destruction. In fact, in verse 18, Paul identifies those people as enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, I know those are tough words to hear. I really get it. After all, I share the good news gospel around here. I want nothing more than for you to walk out your full potential in Christ. But the truth is, however, that you cannot realize God's best in your life if you don't listen to him and heed his direction. And you can't do that if your belly is your God and all you do is listen to it talking to you all day. (laughs) Trust me. Food isn't all bad. In fact, God specifically commanded the children of Israel to celebrate his goodness to them and be joyful in life. These celebrations revolved around feasts. You got that right, a lot of food, but it's vital to understand that there's a time to feast and a time to abstain. Hearing from the Lord and obeying his voice is key to understanding the difference. Now, there are all kinds of examples for us to see in the Bible of how fasting can help us. Moses fasted 40 days before receiving the Ten Commandments. David fasted as he mourned his child's illness. Elijah fasted while he was running from Jezebel. Remember that? Ezra fasted while mourning over the sin of his nation. Esther fasted for her countrymen who were in trouble. Daniel fasted to hear from God. King Darius fasted for Daniel's safety while he was in the lion's den. In the New Testament, Paul fasted right after his conversion in Acts 9. And the church elders at Antioch, they fasted for direction. See, fasting is all throughout the Bible, New and Old Testaments. And do you not want to see another piece of the puzzle here? Satan tempted Adam and Eve with food. It's his greatest weapon of temptation that he could have ever used. Around 4,000 years later, Jesus comes on the scene, and he's called the last Adam. And at the very beginning of his ministry, Satan tempted him. (laughs) And guess what? What was the very first weapon? Food. He tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread. And his tricks literally never change. 
He's tempting you and I with food today and every day. He wants us to get away from hearing the voice of the Lord in our lives. So the answer for us is to answer the temptation the right way, to answer it how Jesus did. And how was that? With the word. That's right. Satan tried to get Jesus away from hearing God's voice. So Jesus answered him with the very word of God that Satan was trying to stop him from heeding. He did so to show him that his tactics had met their match. It worked exactly like it was designed to work too. God's word has always been meant to lead, guide, direct, and protect us. And you know what? It still does all of those things today. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about a lot of these things and the benefits of fasting. But we're also going to talk about the sly trick that Satan has used to turn the beautiful weapon weapon of fasting into a selfish, carnal ritual. You see, many people today think that they're fasting and they're really, they're just dieting. They put a spiritual name on it, but they're only going through the process so that they will lose those extra pounds and get ready for that summer body. The beauty of fasting gets lost on so many people. They're spiritualizing a diet, and churches take full advantage of the New Year's resolutions that are literally rampant right about now. Not only that, but they found a good fast that they could market easily, one Daniel used a long time ago. They've taken it and told people, they just said, yeah, you follow that one. (laughs) Oh, well, to each his own. Personally, my preference is to hear from the Lord every day. When I listen to his voice and live my life each day as he is leading, I don't have to go on a 21-day spiritual diet every January. I can actually operate in self-control and train myself to hear God's voice in July and August too. What a concept, huh? Listen, hopefully I'm not coming across as harsh here. I know many of you might be on a fast right now, and I applaud you for that. Your motives are pure, and your heart is undoubtedly in the right place. But I've found that it's for a lack of knowledge that we perish. Don't do something out of habit or because of peer pressure, even if the peer pressure is coming from your church announcement slides on Sunday morning. When you understand the power behind living a fasted life, everything will begin to make a little more sense. You won't be tempted with that forbidden love affair with the cinnamon roll anymore. You can eat without fear or guilt. You can actually eat in faith, and we'll talk about that today. See, when you step over into that place, You will hear God's voice more clearly than ever before and have the confidence to work uh, and walk out his plan for your life without any sense of guilt, fear, or condemnation. You'll live life how Adam and Eve were designed to live it in the beginning. You'll live it how Jesus actually did live every day of his life. And you'll live it how your father wants you to live today. And that, my friends, is good news. Thank you so much for watching our clip today. If you enjoyed what you heard, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when new material comes out. And if you'd like to watch the entire episode of this podcast, you can click up here and do so. Thank you so much. Remember, Jesus is Lord and you are complete in him.